at this problem that you voted off the island. We're told that you're hanging out by a campfire with Elaine and Billy, your good friends. And Elaine and Billy each have buzzers, and they're sounding their buzzers. And what you hear are the characteristic wah-wah of beats. And you hear four beats per second. Now, um, I don't know what the beat buzzer frequencies were, but perhaps they were 400 hertz and 404 hertz. Those would give me four beats per second, would they not? Okay, now, we find out that Elaine gets up and takes off running away from the campfire, and those of us that stayed behind hear that the beat frequency increases. And the question is, did Elaine have the higher frequency or the lower frequency uh, of the two buzzers? Now, this problem, when it was on an exam, left a lot of people high-centered. They just, they'd never seen a problem like this. They didn't know what equation to plug into. Folks, this is a representative problem of a whole class of problems. Problems in which there's only two possible answers. Either Billy has the higher frequency and Elaine has the lower one, or Elaine has the higher frequency and Billy has the lower one. <coughs> Those are the only two options. When there's only two options, you decide by flipping a coin. <laughs> or just guess. I guess it's this one. Okay? And then check. Now if I check my answer and I find that I was wrong, I still know the right answer. Okay? If there's only two possibilities, all you gotta do is check one of them and you know what the right answer is. So let's check this one here. If Elaine had the lower frequency, and she starts running away from the uh, campfire, what's going to happen to the frequency that we hear from her buzzer due to the Doppler effect? It's, it's going to lower, okay? Not very much, because she's human, and it's hard to run fast enough to get it to go shift very much. But if this goes down a little bit, what does that do to the beat frequency, which is the difference between the two buzzers? Increase. They're going to increase or decrease? Increase. Increase. <laughs> I guessed right. And what were the chances? 50%. <laughs> and that's a whole lot better than just staring at the page and wondering how you're going to do this problem. Okay? Just get off of high center and guess, and then check. Okay, check that your neighbor understands that, please. standing waves because they don't go anywhere. When I send a traveling wave, uh, that disturbance travels across the room. Uh, the, the momentum and the energy actually goes from one place to another. Uh, a standing wave is, is more like this. <laughs> and we call that a wave, but it's not really a wave in the sense of a, of, of a, of a traveling wave. Um, it just doesn't go anywhere, okay? Elbow, elbow, wrist, wrist. Or, I, I can't remember, it's been so long since the competition. <laughs> um, we can set up a standing wave on a spring by um, just oscillating one end. 
Now, folks, if I just pick some random frequency, uh, what happens is that this spring fights me. It's just, as I try to wiggle it, it tries to wiggle me, and it's just fighting me. But if I pick the right frequencies, the frequencies at which this thing wants to oscillate, it stops fighting, okay? That's the longest standing wave that I can fit on this spring. We call it the first harmonic. Now, if I increase the frequency at which I'm wiggling this thing, it starts to fight me. Until I get to just the right frequency, look at my hand, people. Does it look like I'm fighting this? I'm barely wiggling my hand. Uh, my hand is hardly even moving. I'm not feeling any fight from it at all. And we call that the second harmonic. And you'll notice that there's two, I call them footballs, okay? Places where the amplitude is large. Now if I increase the frequency at which I wiggle, it, it fights me again until I find just the right frequency, and there it is. Roll them, roll them, roll them. <laughs> Keep those doggies rolling. Keep those. Anyway. Okay. Now, can I find the fourth one? I don't know. I've never been able to. Let's see if I can. <laughs> hey! It looks like oh, six. <laughs> No, I can't. <laughs> Last semester we had a drummer in the class and he said, can I try? He came down, he got to like the sixth harmonic. It was amazing. I'd like to see him drum. Okay. Now, this is a resonance phenomenon. And if I think about it, uh, carefully, I can figure out what frequency resonates with this spring. If I send a pulse down on the spring on the top, and it hits a fixed boundary, in this case where it's clamped to the table, it will send a reflected pulse down on the bottom. Okay? It's going to be inverted. Now when it gets back to my hand, my hand is not moving very much. My hand is acting like a fixed point, a fixed end. And so that's going to flip it yet again. Now, if I time things just right, if I wait for the first pulse to get down and back before I send the second pulse, the two pulses will be right on top of each other. And then when they get back, I send a third pulse. And it's right on top of the first two. And then the amplitude will build and build and build. Now I can figure out what frequency is needed just with a little simple 205. Okay? I want to wait for that, that pulse to get down and back. If the length of the spring is capital L, I've got to go a distance of 2L with a speed V. Okay? That's how far I gotta go. That's how fast I'm going. If you gotta go 400 miles to Salt Lake City and you're going 50 miles an hour, it's gonna take you eight hours. <coughs> that makes sense? Distance divided by speed. Now, what we care about more than period, it turns out, is frequency. And frequency is just one over period and so that's going to be V over 2L. Now folks, you're going to see this combination of variables over and over and over again. We just won't give it a name. We'll, we'll call it Charlie. <laughs> that's, a, that's a frequency of one Charlie. Okay. One Charlie. We on the board? Now, Greg had a hard time getting to higher frequencies because he's so human. He has weaknesses. We can, we can uh, find out all about him by talking to his family. 
Okay? Now, here we get rid of the human factor by getting rid of the Greg. What we've got here is a string that is clamped at this end. Now, we call this end a node. That's just name calling, but it means it doesn't go anywhere. Now, the other end is connected to a plunger that's driven up and down by a signal generator. Okay? And uh, it goes up and down, but not very much. Kind of like my, my hand was just wiggling a little bit. We call that a quasi-node. Practically a node. For all intents and purposes, a node. Now, what we find is that when we wiggle this thing, there's one frequency at which the amplitude in the middle gets really, really big. And we call that the first harmonic. Now, I don't know whether things have tightened up or loosened up since we did it last period, but it used to be around 11 hertz. Now, if I go past it, the disturbance is just going to disappear immediately. That's how you recognize you've gone too far. So I'm up at about 10 hertz, 9.7, 9.8, 9.9. Let's call it 10. <laughs> and we're at 10.2. Now, the place in the middle where it's moving the most, we call the anti-node, not the node, OK? I call it a football, OK? It, it, when you go fast enough, it's all blurred, and it just looks like a football. I never played football, I don't really know. <laughs> so I get up about 11, and it goes away. 10.7, it goes away. Okay? And it stays nothing until I get up to twice that. Well, 10.7 times 2 is like 21.4, right? <coughs> So if I go up to 21.4, now, you'll notice that now I have two footballs, or two anti-nodes. And the closer I get to that resonance, the bigger that amplitude. I don't want to go too far, it'll just go away. I want to talk about this first. This point here is another node. Even though it's not clamped, it's not going anywhere. So I have two anti-nodes, two footballs. Okay. So I'll go back down and approach it from below. So that, let that be a lesson to you. Don't touch it. Okay? Just keep your hands to yourself. Okay. Now, I get up around 21 and it's going to go away. Ha! There it goes. So, where's the next one going to be? 30 something, right? I want to triple it. I want to get three footballs. I don't want to double it again. I want to triple it. So, it should be about 32, somewhere around there. it there because I don't want to mess it up. I'm going to turn on a strobe light and at the frequencies at which I'm going to use it's been shown that it can actually trigger um, epileptic seizures. So if you're prone <laughs> to epileptic seizures I would ask you when I turn off the lights in the room close your eyes and take a nap. Ask someone about it later. No big deal. Okay. Um, but just don't watch the strobe light. That's not, that's not the darkest equation. It would appear so. 
Okay. Close your eyes if you are prone. I'm turning it on now. Oh. Yeah, that's what I was looking for. Wow. <laughs> now, with the strobe light, I can make it appear stationary. <laughs> now, if I make it move slowly, what you see that is, is I have three anti-nodes, and they're just completely out of phase with each other, meaning when the middle one is up, the two on the side are down, and vice versa. Okay, so that's essentially slowing down time by only looking uh, every so often. Okay, now I'm turning off the strobe and you can look again. Oh, neat. <laughs> now, I'm going to look for the fourth harmonic, and it's not going to be exactly at four times the first because I'm, uh, I'm making this thing go so fast that I'm changing the tension and the string. But if I go past the third harmonic, it goes away. And there's the fourth harmonic starting up. I got four footballs. See, that's what Greg couldn't do with his humanness. And when I shoot past that, I now can go for the fifth harmonic. And now you can start to hear it. Notice the amplitude's not as big because I don't have as many, I don't have as much string to, to play with when I've got to supply it to five footballs. Okay. Good enough. So if you went back down the dial, it wouldn't pop back up. I mean, you have to approach it from the, the bottom. Okay. Yeah, you have to come up from the bottom. Okay. And those of you that are going to be science teachers, that's one of the m most common rookie mistakes is you, you shoot past it and then you go back looking for it, you'll never find it. What if you were to strum it while it was flat? Like if it, if the, if it fell and then strum it, would it... Yes, you could get it back going again. That's a very uh, good point. Thank you. It's essentially like... Uh, like a guitar. Just... Yeah, triggering. Okay. Now, I told you back in the day when we first introduced this equation the wave equation I told you that that worked for all waves whether it was transverse waves, longitudinal waves and then I said traveling waves and standing waves well, that seems strange because that's a speed. If it's a standing wave, it's not going anywhere, it's just oscillating. And so why would I be able to use this equation with the V still equal to the tension over the mass density square root for uh, transverse waves and the speed for longitudinal waves given by that. Why would these values still apply if, if nothing's moving? Well, let me show you on this wave machine. I'm going to start a wave with a, a regular disturbance, uh, just a sinusoidal uh, disturbance, and what you're going to see is a traveling wave moving to your right. It's going to bounce off this end that's fixed, and start coming back with a reflected wave. Now, as soon as it starts coming back, you're going to find something happen. As the wave comes back, the places where I have two waves, one going to your right and one going to your left, I get a standing wave. Watch what happens. Here we go. There's the wave going to your right. It bounces. It comes back. And now I've got a standing wave. Can you see the nodes? Can you see the anti-nodes? So what we have here is really two traveling waves that are passing through each other 
at the same speed, that speed. And in the process, when we add it up, we can show mathematically with about 30 minutes worth of uh, ugly trigonometry that we get, no, we're not gonna do it. Okay. <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna get this standing wave pattern. Now years ago, many years ago, 22 years ago, I had a graduate student that was working with me, but he failed out. He didn't fail out because he wasn't brilliant. He was one of the most brilliant to ever come to MSU. He failed out because he could never go to class because he was too busy playing with his computer. Now that was back when computers were just a fad that was gonna die out. And, and uh, this guy was just night and day doing things with his computer. So he failed out, he went to Silicon Valley. He's now a multi, multi-millionaire uh, guru. And, uh, but while he was here, he made this little video for me. And this was back when we didn't have programs to make videos. Everything had to be done uh, the hard way. And uh, he made this little video about standing waves. Here we show the superposition of two oppositely propagating, but otherwise identical, sine waves. The blue wave propagates left to right, whereas the green wave, right to left. The bottom trace shows their sum. The addition of these two waves results in a wave that oscillates, but stands still, hence the name standing wave. The dashed lines are positioned at nodes of a standing wave, points that do not oscillate. These represent, in the case of, say, an acoustic cavity, rigid walls, or in the case of an optical cavity, reflecting mirrors. The point is, that's why we can still use that wave equation, because it still describes what's actually going on in the standing wave. <laughs> It's just going on twice, once to the left and once to the right, okay? Now, in summary, standing wave ar uh, arrives from a superposition of identical waves traveling in opposite directions. It's a resonance phenomena that only happens at certain frequencies. But what we find is that for the case with the string that's uh, <coughs> clamped at both ends, if F1 resonates, then F2, which is twice F1, will resonate, and F3, which is three times F1, will resonate, and F4, which is four times F1, will resonate. We call this the first harmonic, the second harmonic, the third harmonic, and so forth. So the seventeenth harmonic would be seventeen times the first harmonic. It's that simple. Now, nodes are points where there is no oscillation. Even though the whole thing's going crazy, those points don't move. The antinodes are where the movement is the greatest. They are spaced equally uh, centered between two nodes. Now, the, the name of the game with these standing waves is to find these frequencies. And here's the thing you need to understand. I can't draw frequencies on a blackboard or a whiteboard. You can't see frequencies. But I can draw wavelengths. I can draw pictures of wavelengths. And once I find the wavelength, I can find the frequency. And it turns out that not only is this equation valid for standing waves, it's valid for every harmonic of the standing wave. So this is valid for the first harmonic, this is valid for the second harmonic, this is valid for the third harmonic, and so forth. Okay? 
So let's see if we can find those wavelengths. And once we have the wavelengths, we can use that formula to find the frequency. Okay? Well, this is the first harmonic. I only have one football. Okay? It's the lowest frequency, the longest wavelength that will fit the boundary conditions. The boundary conditions are I got to have a note at this end, I got to have a note at that end. So the longest wave that'll fit is one football. Now, folks, if I look at a wave, A wave looks like that. It's got an up and a down. So for a standing wave, when these things are going back and forth, if I wait half a period, this thing's going to look like that. And that's one wavelength. Or two. Now folks, nowhere else on the planet do they call those footballs. I'm the only guy. So if you go somewhere else, please either don't use that terminology or don't tell people that you learned it from me. <laughs> but I think it's useful. I think it's a good way to learn because you can visualize those footballs. Now here I've only got one football. It takes two footballs to make a wavelength. I've only got half a, half a wavelength. Okay, there's the nodes at the end. There's the anti-node in the middle. And I only have half a wavelength. Now what I want to do is I want to get that wavelength in terms of the length of the string. And the length of the string is capital L. So if L is half a wavelength, that means the wavelength is 2L. Okay. So let's go over here to the wave equation and find out what the first frequency would be. Well, V is equal to the frequency of the first harmonic times the wavelength of the first harmonic, which is 2L. If I solve that for the first harmonic frequency, I get V over 2L. What's that? Who's that? Charlie. Okay, remember I told you would see that a lot? Is that an acceptable answer right here? No. If you, if you put Charlie and talk about Charlie anywhere else, I'll deny it. I'll, I'll say that I never taught you that. And who are they going to believe? All of you or, or me? Yeah. Okay. Now, if we go to the second harmonic, now I've got three nodes. More importantly, I've got two footballs. I've doubled the number of footballs that fit on that string. If I double the number of footballs that fit in the string, the footballs have to be half as big. Well, if it takes two footballs to make a wavelength, that means the wavelength just got half as big. Okay? In this case, it's easy because I got the two footballs there. That means the wavelength is the length of the string of the string. Now, but here's the important part. That's half what it used to be. It used to be 2L, and now it's just L. Now, if we go to the third harmonic. Now I've got three footballs. What is the wavelength in terms of L here? One half L. Is it half L? One. Two thirds L. Now, some of you could just visualize that. You say, well, two footballs is a wavelength, and that's two thirds of the total L. Let me show you another way if that doesn't work for you. This formula will be on the front page of the exam, except if you tell anyone, I'll deny it. It's the number of footballs <laughs> times lambda over 2 is equal to the length of the system. Now, if I did that for this problem here, I would say I've got three footballs times lambda over 2, and that's going to equal the length of the system. If I solve that for lambda, I get three halves, uh, no, two thirds L. Did I get that right? More importantly, that's 2L over 3. What's 2L? 2L was the first wavelength. 
And so what we've seen here is that the, the wavelength goes from 2L to half that much to a third that much. Anyone want to guess what the next one's going to be? A fourth that much. Okay? Now, if I use the wave equation, if the wavelengths are getting smaller by a factor of 2 and 3 and 4, and the speed stays the same, then by that wave equation, that means the frequency has to get bigger by a factor of 2 and then 3 and then 4. Okay? And those are the harmonics. Okay. A consequence of that wave equation. Now, folks, I have to pause here just to uh, kind of explain some, some name calling. Uh, these waves are, are owned by the physics department. But the music department thinks they own them too, because this is music. In the physics department, we call this the first harmonic, the second harmonic, the third harmonic, because we want to use that mathematics. We want the third harmonic to be three times the first harmonic. Over in the music department, they don't care so much about the equations. They just want it to sound pretty. So they call it the fundamental, the first overtone, and the second overtone, so forth. Now, have any of you lived in Germany? or been to Germany, if you go to visit a friend and they live, well, you have to go up one flight of stairs to get to them. Which floor do they live on? The first floor. Okay, the Erstgestalt. If they live on the ground floor, they call that the, the Erdgestalt, the ground floor. Okay? And so they go from ground one, two, three, and uh, so if you live in the penthouse on the fifth floor, there are six stories in that Building. It's not that one way is right and one way is wrong, it's just that the physics department is right. <laughs> now, it turns out that we have adopted the language of the music department on the fundamental. Sometimes we will, often we will call that the fundamental instead of the first harmonic. We'll use those two interchangeably. But we will never call that the first overtone because that will mess up our mathematics. Okay? Now, this is a simple problem, just to get us started. A string stretched between two fixed supports sets up standing waves with two nodes between the ends when driven at 240 hertz. Draw a picture of the standing wave pattern. What is the fundamental frequency for this uh, setup? And at what frequency will the standing wave have three nodes between the ends? So really quick, see if you can solve that. When you get a value for part C, raise your hand. What'd you get, sir? 60. I'm sorry? Uh, 180. 180? Does anyone get something different? 320? Anyone get one of those? Which did you get? Oh, I got a different one. Which one? I got 480. 480? What did you get? 360. 360? Oh, we got all sorts of answers. <laughs> Let's do this one together, people. Um, I've got two extra nodes besides the nodes at the end. Now the nodes have to be evenly spaced, so that means I'm going to have a node here and a node there. Wait, how do you know that there are, that you get two in the middle? Because it says there's two between the ends. Yeah, it says they're, oh, they're fixed at the ends, and there's okay. two nodes between the ends. I gave it two on. Ah, two okay. Let's solve this problem. Okay, two evenly spaced nodes. Now, what that's going to give me is a wave pattern that looks like this. 
at one instant in time, and then half a period later, it would look like that. Now, which harmonic have I just drawn? That's the third harmonic, and we're told that that's 240 hertz. <laughs> now, that's going to be three times the first harmonic. Well, that means that the first harmonic has to be 80 hertz, because three times 80 is 240. Now, if I draw the next allowed one, the next allowed one has three nodes in between the ends, so that's a total of five nodes. That pattern is going to be like this, and that's got four footballs, so that would be F4, which would be four times F1, which would be 320 hertz. Okay? That's, that's all the harder it gets. Yes? What's an octave? What's an octave? Yeah. Okay, people, we need to... Uh, <laughs> We need to come clean here. We can take everything that Greg knows about music and dance it on the head of a pin. So after class, find someone that knows what an octave is and ask them. I know the equations. Sorry. Uh, for, my se for my seventh birthday, what I asked for, not my birthday, but for Christmas, all I want Santa to, to bring was that I could quit piano lessons. And I got it. I think it's amazing. He's good. Okay, there's a wrinkle. I wish it were this simple all the time. There's a wrinkle. And I'm going to illustrate that with this example. It turns out that you can make music, sort of, by clamping a hacksaw blade to a post and then twanging it. Okay, twang, twang, twang. It's country and western. Okay. <laughs> now, if I draw a graph showing the two lowest harmonics that can occur on the hacksaw blade and find the wavelength of each harmonic, I do that by drawing pictures. Well, there's a hacksaw blade. Where it's clamped to the post has to be a node. And this end over here is free, so that's got to be an anti-node. Now, it turns out that that makes this fundamentally different from this case. In this case, I was going from a node to a node. The two ends were the same. If I go from a node to an anti-node, the longest wave that will fit is only half a football. Now, this is important. When the ends are the same, I start with one whole football. When I go to the next allowed resonance, I've got to add a football, so I go from one to two, I double the number of footballs. Let's look what happens here. First of all, the fundamental wavelength is not 2L. It's not twice the length of the system. In this case, I've only got half a football. It takes two footballs to make a wavelength. I've only got a fourth of a wavelength. That means a wave, a wavelength has to be 4L, not 2L, 4L. Now, we still call that the fundamental because it's the lowest frequency that will resonate. But if I go to the next allowed resonance, I still have to have a node there and an anti-node there. When I go to the next highest resonance, the next higher resonance, I always add a football. So watch what happens. How many footballs do I have? One and a half. One and a half. Now another way of saying that is three half footballs. I went from a half football to three half footballs. I tripled the number of footballs that fit in the system. That means my footballs have to get smaller by a factor of three. What that means from the wave equation is that I'm going to have a frequency that is now three times the fundamental. Now, what I'm saying is that there's two distinctly different types of standing waves. When the ends are the same, you go from one football to two football to three football to four footballs, and likewise you go from F1 to F2 to F3 to F4. When the ends are different, when one's a node and one's an anti-node, you go from half a football to three half footballs, 
The next one would be five half footballs. And what we, what we see is that we go right from F1 to F3 to F5. The even harmonics are missing. Okay, so in summary, when the ends are the same, I get all of them. F1, F2, F3, F4, F5, F6. When the ends are different, one an node, one an antinode, you just get the odd ones. One, three, five, seven, nine. Okay. Check to see if your neighbor's on the bus, please. problem, we take a string, thank you, we take a string and we hook it to a post with a frictionless, massless ring. Ooh, does that ring any bells? Does that sound familiar? Is this going to be a fixed end or a free end? Free. It's a free end. Then we let that string wrap around the pulley and it's attached to this heavy mass. Now that mass holds that string so it's right there next to the pulley all the time. Can't move. So is that going to be a node or an anti-node? No. It's going to be a node. This is a free end. It's going to be an anti-node. And so this is a, a case like the hacksaw blade. Now we find that you can set up standing waves by just jiggling this block. Now the mass of the block is chosen uh, to determine the frequencies at which this will oscillate. If I look at the wave equation, V is equal to F lambda, the tension in the string is what's going to cause the V. Okay? And so I find that certain frequencies at which I jiggle this block are going to set up the standing waves on that portion of the string. Now the question we want to ask, or answer, is which frequencies are going to make those standing waves? Now, let's do this problem together. We've got three minutes. I'll do it quickly. We're asked to find the tension in the string. Can you do that in the head? Yeah. Yeah, that tension is going to be 300 newtons. And you get that from a free body diagram. The weight is 300 newtons. And I used to do that. Thank you. And the tension is going to equal the weight. Also 300 newtons. Is that better? Now the wave speed is given by the square root of the tension over the mass density. Well, that's going to be the square root of 300 over, well, let's see, what would that be? The mass density is the total mass of the string divided by the total length of the string. Oops. <laughs> 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 
I was never here. <laughs> now, that's going to be 0.01 kilograms over 3 meters. Now, I can also multiply top and bottom by 100 and say that's 1 over 300 kilograms per meter. And I do it that way because when I put it in here, I can invert and multiply, and now I'm taking the square root of 300 squared. I can do that in my head. That's going to be 300 meters per second. Now you can see that I cooked these numbers so they'd work out easy. Unfortunately, I cooked them to the point where um, it looks like there's something important there. I get 300 for both answers. That's just because of the way I chose my numbers. There's no physics there, okay? Uh, they just happen to be the same. Now, the first harmonic is going to go straight from a note to an antinote. The next harmonic is going to add one football. So this would be the first harmonic and this would be the third harmonic. Now to find the frequency of this harmonic, I need to know what the wavelength is. And then I can find with V is equal to frequency times wavelength, <coughs> I can find that frequency. Well, I can find the wavelength by using the number of footballs times lambda over 2 is equal to the length of this part of the string that's oscillating. That's 2 meters. So I'm going to have 3 half footballs times lambda over 2 is equal to 2 meters, or lambda 3 is equal to 8 meters over 3. So I come over here and I put in 300 meters per second for the speed. I put 8 thirds meters for the wavelength, and I solve for F3. We're out of time, people. I'm sorry to keep you extra. I will not charge you for that extra minute. It's free. <laughs> It's on me.